Did you know that some of the legendary Hollywood dumb blondes were actually intellectual giants? Bombshells like Jane Mansfield, Marilyn Monroe, and others were known to have incredibly high IQs and use their supreme intellect to advance their careers, push the bounds of publicity, and even become poets, inventors, and more. So, stick around as Facts First presents old Hollywood bombshells who hid their genius IQ levels. Jane Mansfield Jane Mansfield was an enigmatic and successful performer who rose to stardom not because of her towering intellect, but because she could play roles that were decidedly lacking intelligence. She was originally hired and promoted by 20th Century Fox to be another Marilyn Monroe. The era of the blonde bombshell had begun, and studios were clamoring to get their hands on women who could bring the glamour, charm, and general ditziness that Monroe seemed to do so effortlessly. And Jane was basically given the assignment by 20th Century Fox of becoming an exact copy of Monroe. It worked fairly well, as Mansfield became a big name in Hollywood before her tragic and untimely death. She was born in Pennsylvania in 1933 to an attorney father and schoolteacher mother. Sadly, her father died of a heart attack when Jane was three. Despite this, she was an excellent student. Her mother pushed her to excel in school and perform artistically as well. Jane had an early interest in dancing and playing the violin. She would reportedly play violin outside on her driveway, entertaining anyone who happened to walk by. After attending SMU and the University of Texas at Austin, she tried her hand at acting in Hollywood. These initial years were rough, as she was rejected for contracts with Paramount and Warner Brothers, and even was let go from a modeling gig for GE for being too seductive. But eventually, she broke out in the film business in the late 50s and early 60s. She's known for films like Kiss Them For Me, The Wayward Bus, and It Takes a Thief. At the same time, Mansfield was a cunning businesswoman and had a mind for marketing. In an attempt to separate herself from the other actresses vying for the throne of most popular voluptuous blonde actress, she started wearing only pink. She had decided pink was going to be her signature tone, and not only did she wear it all the time, but she also drove a pink car and decorated her home in the color as well. As such, she referred to her house as the Pink Palace. Mansfield pushed the boundaries when it came to PR. For example, she participated in a Playboy interview in 1963 that was so racy for the time that it landed Hugh Hefner in prison. This obviously garnered that issue a ton of press. And that same year, she was the first American actress to bear it all on screen in Promises, Promises, which gave a much-needed publicity boost to her slightly fading career. And when we consider how often this type of strategy has been used ever since, it's not hard to see Mansfield's influence. She essentially originated the wardrobe malfunction by regularly showing a little too much skin accidentally. She even sold bottles of her used bath water to fans as keepsakes, netting $10 with each one. Mansfield was said to have an IQ of 149. Marilyn Monroe Marilyn Monroe was perhaps the original blonde bombshell, and she took Hollywood and the world by storm when she became a movie star and pinup icon. She had looks and talent, and an allure that was hard to define yet easy to see. Yet Monroe, like Jane Mansfield, was far more intelligent than her dumb blonde roles would suggest. According to historians, most of what the public saw from Monroe was an act, and one she didn't particularly enjoy putting on. Yet the powers that be knew they had a gold mine on their hands, and they exploited her to the fullest. Monroe was essentially used as a sex object, becoming the demure and seemingly dumb caricature that she became globally famous for. She was often given roles as a mistress or a gold digger, but Monroe only begrudgingly went along with this kind of marketing because she knew she had an it factor that other women couldn't match. But her intellect and talents made this typecasting a hard pill to swallow. She even disliked one of her most famous scenes and images, that of the subway grate that blew up her dress in Billy Wilder's The Seven Year Itch. Monroe said of the shoot that initially she was having fun, and that it was an innocent enough scene, but then Wilder insisted on shooting it over and over, and that ended up drawing crowds of men around to leer at Monroe and shout at her, which she didn't appreciate. As far as IQ, there are rumors hers was around 168, which is astonishingly high. Although Scott Forner, who runs a website about Marilyn, disputes that specific number, pointing out that she never actually took an IQ test. However, it's well known she was a voracious reader. Despite being a high school dropout, she owned a 400-plus book library that consisted of books on things ranging from poetry to politics to philosophy. Monroe wrote poetry as well. It's also been said Marilyn had a keen and biting sense of humor. 
According to author Sarah Churchwell, who wrote The Many Lives of Marilyn Monroe, Marilyn used her humor and intellect to even mess with journalists sometimes. Churchwell points at a time when, after Monroe had recently divorced from playwright Arthur Miller, a reporter asked her the rude question of whether she thought Miller had only married her to have a muse. Monroe reportedly agreed to answer the question, with the stipulation that the reporter had to print her full answer and not edit it. When he agreed, she replied, no comment. Before we tell you more, be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to Factsverse if you haven't already. Hedy Lamar. Before Mansfield and Monroe took the world by storm, there was Hedy Lamar. Lamar was called the most beautiful woman in the world during the 1940s and was an international pinup and movie star. She made a name for herself starring in the film Ecstasy in 1933, in which she not only appeared fully nude, but also appeared to have an orgasm on screen. Though Lamar later revealed that love scene was basically the director shouting loudly at her and even poking her skin with a pin to make her squirm. And yet it made Lamar a big star, despite the film being banned in the U.S., though her notoriety was likely helped by the many secret screenings of the film in America. She was also the inspiration for both Snow White and Catwoman, and her beauty was so highly regarded it was the most requested look for women seeking plastic surgery in the 1940s. But her biggest achievements weren't in Tinseltown at all. She was an incredible inventor. In between takes and between movies, she would tinker with all sorts of inventions and ideas that flowed out of her. In her early inventing days, she had some unsuccessful attempts, like coming up with tablets that could be dropped into water to make soda. But she also had early success, like helping her then-boyfriend Howard Hughes streamline his racing plane. But Lamar's biggest achievement by far was an invention that helped the U.S. Navy in World War II. She and her inventing partner, composer George Antile, developed a secret communication system for the Navy. It utilized what's known as frequency hopping, and in particular, it allowed the Navy to operate its radio-guided missiles underwater without them being picked up by enemy radar. It was not only a huge triumph for the Navy, but it had lasting effects for years to come, including the modern era. Lamar's ideas for frequency hopping were the precursor to modern Wi-Fi technology. While it's unknown if Lamar ever took an IQ test, it's clear her IQ was basically through the roof. Judy Holliday Another very early starlet in the mold of Mansfield, Monroe, and Lamar was Judy Holliday. She played a string of classic dumb blonde roles in the 1940s. There was perhaps no better example of this than the movie Born Yesterday. It was first a stage play, and Holliday exhibited her brilliant mind when she landed the role. She was a last-minute fill-in and had to memorize the tricky role in three days. She did so without issue, and the show was a hit. She then went on to play it again in the movie adaptation and won an Academy Award for her efforts. She was reported to have an IQ of 172, which is staggeringly high. And there was one notable occasion where she was able to use her intellect as well as her on-screen persona to her advantage and to help others. In 1952, she was brought before a Senate subcommittee that was part of the blacklisting and anti-communist witch hunt in Hollywood. Holiday, however, was determined not to sell out her friends and co-workers. So she tapped into her Born Yesterday character of a rather idiotic girl with a silly voice and managed to charm the senators who were grilling her, all the while giving them no relevant information. She sailed through the hearing, keeping her friends safe and fooling the Senate effortlessly. Now it's time to hear from you. Which one of these brilliant and sexy women is your favorite? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.